this is the single most haunted place I've ever been. There are some creepers. We have shadows that move along the ceilings and in the corners. Did you hear that? Yes. What's the kid's name? Ashley. <gasps> I just got cold chills on my legs. I just said my name. Just said my name. Just said my name. Scared the <laughs> out of me. <gasps> Hear voicing? Chair. <gasps> the haunted chair. I can hear footsteps. I've never seen this behave like this. This is going nuts. Danger. But it feels like there's someone right behind me. Hey, Crypt Keepers, thank you so much for tuning into Amy's Crypt. Tonight, Jared and I are investigating a haunted and historic mansion in St. Joseph, Missouri. This place is incredible for its historical value, but also there's been a lot of paranormal claims and a lot of activity to occur here. So much so that recent renovations were not even able to take place out of fear of the ghostly goings on. So stay tuned. Known locally as the House on the Hill, the Beatty Mansion is said to be one of the most haunted buildings in Missouri, and considering its history, that is no surprise. The Grand Home was built in 1854 by Armstrong Beatty and his wife Eliza. Eventually, Armstrong would pass from cholera in 1878, with Eliza following in death just two years later. Since this wealthy couple had produced no heirs, their mansion would take on many uses over the coming years, namely assuming the role of a house for the friendless. The area's homeless, distressed, aged and orphaned population would pass through the former home's many rooms, with those suffering from mental illness and substance abuse problems also seeking refuge within the Beatty Mansion. In 2004, the building was purchased by private owners who intended to turn it into a bed and breakfast. However, this plan was halted by the resident ghosts. Allegedly, paranormal activity was too intense and frequent that contractors refused to work within the Beatty Mansion's walls and the true extent to the hauntings here were revealed. There's a lot of ambient, Lights, you'll see flashes of lights in places where there are no lights. There's whistling sometimes, sounds like men whistling. There's singing, Eliza loved music, and you can often hear notes on the piano. There's two pianos in the house, you can hear notes on the piano. Um, there's some creepers, we have shadows that move along the ceilings and in the corners, and that's the first thing that I saw in the house, was black cloud looked like tar kind of swirling around on the ceiling in the parlor in there. Lots of children's spirits and they are pretty feisty. They like to run up and down the steps. They like to swing on the chandelier and go, they go in and out the kitchen all the time. And of course they're upstairs as well in the little girl's room we have up there where the rocking chair is. Biggest thing I think you would experience here would be orbs, door slamming, dragging sounds, footsteps, there's heavy boot steps. You would get a lot of images on a SLS type device. There are also spirits seen walking the grounds and on the balconies. We have a lot of people walking through doors. A heavy presence of working girls here, if you will. After they were displaced, could no longer work, they would come here sometimes to have children or just to get a leg up. Also, multiple places in the basement where children would hide and you can hear them down there running around. You name it, we got it, really. I mean, this is the single most haunted place I've ever been in a consistent manner. Tonight, we will sleep within the historic and haunted Beatty Mansion, reach out to the spirits who continue to reside there and attempt to capture paranormal activity onto camera. It is about time to kick off our paranormal investigation. We are going to do so by doing a walkthrough of the house. So I really want to show you guys around here because this place is huge. It's scary. It is uh, dark. It has a lot of feeling to it, but there is a lot of stuff in here as well. Everywhere you walk, there seems to be an artifact, whether it's a creepy doll, a toy, a mounted elk, on the wall. <laughs> there is so much going on here. It's an incredible place and I tell you what, it has a vibe, it has a feeling. There's stuff going on in this house. I I can feel it and I'm not even claimed to be sensitive or anything like that. We're gonna run ghost tube of course and see if we pick up on anything. Um, and hopefully that helps to guide our investigation. But I also have some uh, areas of interest and stories to share with you guys as we go through as well.
it's about time to do some ghost hunting. <laughs> okay, well, the first thing I wanted to show everyone is actually this picture in the corner here. The reason I wanted to show you all, uh, this is actually a post-mortem uh, picture. And I just find that a bit unsettling. I know that was a thing back in the day, but it's just really... Three children? I don't know, it's, it's sad, but also quite eerie, right? All right, staircase upstairs, just above our heads, is where I personally feel the most vibes. So I'm excited to take you guys up there, but that's not where we're going first. <gasps> Did you hear that? Yes. Betrayed. Betrayed. Bang first. <gasps> Bang first. <gasps> Bang first. <gasps> Who are you? Uh, this is the Beatty Mansion. Can you guide us to where you are and maybe we can help you? The door right behind you. Um, room two. A blind, yeah, room two. Apparently a blind man was in there. Where am I? Maybe that could be related there. I actually think the word betrayed is related too because um, Eliza and her inheritance. A guy earlier was telling us a story that she was left out of the will and the nieces and nephews got all the money and so that was relevant too actually, I felt. House was left to Eliza, but no money to run it and all the money went to nieces and nephews. So basically she had nothing but the house and I think that's why she's still here because it basically was her right to be here and why would you leave the only thing you have? She didn't get out much. I mean, she doesn't have much history here. It's all about him and what he accomplished. And she was basically in the shadows raising two nieces and a nephew and didn't have a public profile. People didn't even know when she passed away. They put in a posthumous obituary in the paper for her. She didn't get the glory she needed and I think that's why she's still here. True, so after Armstrong passed away, he passed away two years or so before Eliza, he left her with this big old house and no money, no money to run it. So maybe that was like the ultimate betrayal. They had no heirs of their own, so yeah. You're right, Jared. I was listening during my history lesson today. I know, I'm so proud. <laughs> Oh, that looks dark down there. Oh, yes. So the Beatty Mansion has had so many uses during its life. I did think I heard another noise. It was uh, obviously the family home for the Beatties. Then home. Uh, home. Oh. I literally just said what it the was hell? home. You were just talking about their home. That is pretty crazy. It knew. Uh, uh, Okay, I'm sure this was home to a lot of people though. I see you. Okay, my name is Amy and I'm here with Jared. Who are we talking to right now? Downstairs. We are downstairs. There is another downstairs though. Do they mean the basement? I say we go downstairs and follow. Do you hear voice in? It sounded like a cough. To me downstairs, I'm feeling this way, not the basement. There is a basement, we will take you guys down there, but. I actually thought I heard a voice down here. I heard something. Sounded almost Why like, am I here? It sounded almost like a cough. Okay, there was a lot of people who were housed here. Orphans, uh, aged, this was a nursing home. Uh, people who were suffering from mental illness, addiction issues, um, people who, who were homeless, people who had nowhere to go. This was literally called uh, the house for the friendless. And they did a lot of work and housed a lot of people, probably helped a lot of people, but this was a hard place to be back in the day. And 
Is that kind Ruth. of strikes me? Ruth. Table. Table. Well, I don't know anything about the roof. Table. There's a table here. There are actually a number of tables here. Five. Five. Chair. <gasps> the haunted chair is behind you, Joe. Oh, whoa. Toy. Sorry that I'm yelling. I'm so excited. Okay, there are toys everywhere, guys. Are you talking about these toys? This bench as well is where Marianne said she heard a growl. Someone gro a man growled at her twice there. I was picking up some stuff off this bench right here and I heard, <sighs> just like that. And my husband was going, come on, I'm tired, I'm hungry, I wanna go home. He was hurrying me and I was going, all right, all right, all right. And then I heard, <sighs> as I was picking up my stuff. And I felt something going on, but I didn't really hear it. I heard movement around me. And when I reviewed the, I was recording. I told him, be quiet, I'm recording. And so my husband shut up, but this guy continued to growl. He growled at me twice. Is this actually haunted, this chair? Yeah. So guys, this chair is like a potty chair or a toilet chair, you might call it, depending on what part of the world you're from. And Marianne also said that People have had activity in this space too with this chair. She literally said, this is the haunted potty chair. I've never heard of one of those before. <laughs> it's great though. That's I kind of want to sit on it, but it looks like it's old, so I won't. Next best thing, we'll put ghost tube on the haunted potty chair. Is there somebody around us? Are you connected to the chair? Can you move the chair? Can you go towards it, sit on it? Okay guys, things have went quiet now, so we're moving upstairs. Honestly, the staircase to me seems very dark, very tragic. The reason being is we were told that a young woman did take her life here. She hanged herself. And um, yeah, that, is, that hits me pretty hard. That is very sad. That's weird because we also just said a noise in the staircase. That literally sound like someone just hit the stairs, right? That pole there is apparently where she did it from. I heard like a creak. Be hard, that is very sad. Be hard, that is very sad. Can you tap on the stairs to let us know that you're here? Tagging a train in the background. As soon as we came up here earlier today, I was, I don't know, drawn or attracted to the, down this hallway. The opposite end of the building to where we're standing is where I feel most, I don't want to say connected, but I, I didn't realize there was a train so close. So guys, yeah, as soon as we came up here, I felt compelled to head this way. This is where I feel the most, I say off as if there's someone around, but there's no, I'm alone, right? Not necessarily like scary, ominous or anything like that, but it feels like there's something that is not right down there. I don't know if this is related, but they say Eliza hangs out on the second floor a lot and just behind us here. This is the only known portrait of Eliza B Beatty in existence. So that's the main spirit here, right? That is, yeah. Eliza is our most prominent single spirit here. She is a constant presence. We tried to make it more like a home and the nicer we make it, more comfortable we make it, the more activity we get from her and all the spirits actually. We have uh, a lot of walking in the hallways. Eliza is seen uh, at the intersections of the hallways and up at the top of the steps. So Eliza's spirit is known to almost be a protector and watch over the house. And, you know, our guide was telling us today that that almost makes sense because this was all that she was left. This was all that she had after Armstrong, her husband, passed away. That's what he left her, you know? So it makes sense this is her home and it's nice to have the portrait representation of here now as well. Probably nice for her spirit as well too, you know? So as you guys have already seen, there's a lot of rooms here. 
This one though is a child's room, which of course is sad. Uh, this is young Mabel's room. Mabel was an orphan who lived here at the house. She was here with siblings, brothers and sisters, but she died when she was uh, four years old and she died here in the house. There are children who haunt the home and Mabel is known to be one of them. She is actually a named spirit here. And um, Mabel, if you're around, my name is Amy and this is Jared here and we're not scary people. We're just here to make friends. So if you're, you you want to say hello to someone tonight, please don't be shy. Don't be afraid of us. It is a very tragic story though. I'm sure these toys probably aren't original, but they do add a vibe to the room, don't they? For sure. There's a Buzz Lightyear over there. I don't think yeah. that, that was a thing. <laughs> Pixar didn't exist back then, right? Yeah, when young Mabel was around, so. Is this like a giant capel they've got here? And this here, guys, this is the area where I'm drawn to. Oh, that just touched my head. <laughs> Scared the out of me. But this is, yeah, this is where I vibe most for some reason. So down here was, again, where a lot of uh, people were kept here. But they say there's a lot of shadow play that occurs down here. So a lot of people see figures walking from room to room, even passing through walls and such. Down the front of the house here, this is where the Beatties lived. This was their rooms. Eliza or Armstrong, are either of you around tonight? Can you say your name to let us know that you're here? Eliza, is it okay if I come into your bedroom? Are you okay with us being in here? There is a very interesting Bible over here. Uh, so I was told this Bible actually comes from a funeral home. So it's not original to this building. I've heard there's a lot of notes um, that people have written in it. And yeah, it's not original to the building. It came from a funeral home. So I don't know if it could have its own attachments. But the religious aspect to the Bible also is uh, sort of interesting to the home. Because down in the basement, they not only did... Uh, children's school classes down there but they also did uh church sessions down there so religion is tied to the house and i just think how it's sitting here with the reading glasses in eliza's room i don't know it's just it's like captured the time sort of thing it stands out to me yeah gone gone i was just about to leave i hope that's okay that we're in here Armstrong, are you around? This is his bedroom, right? This is his bedroom. And Eliza's was on the opposite end. So I don't know what's the deal with them having separate bedrooms, you know? I think Marianne was saying that they had a very strange relationship, right? Like, again, he didn't leave her anything except the house, no money, went to all the kids. Um, and I think she, she was also saying that it was always for him and... He took the credit for everything and he was the most important thing in this house as everything was for him sort of thing. So maybe she felt a bit left out or a bit, um, you know, not valued or, you know, appreciated. So she was kind of left in his shadow, I guess. And it's a bit of a dog move to just like leave your wife nothing, I think. This room in particular here. So apparently this in the day was conjoined to the front room. So this was more of the sitting room um, for Armstrong. And this is one of the places they were trying to specifically renovate for the bed and breakfast here. And so much activity was happening in here that they just couldn't go through with it. They couldn't get contractors to stay in here and work in this room because the paranormal activity was so severe, so intense that it's basically scared the crap out of them. They wouldn't come back. Is there anyone in here that um, can come forward? I want to know why you're trying to scare contractors in here. What did you do to them? Can you show me? It's funny because earlier today, this was during the day, I was standing in that very doorway right there and I heard a noise out here. It sounded as if it came from 
down that way. And it sounded so much like someone was messing with the door, either opening or closing it. That was actually quite an architectural feat at the time. There, this was the largest wall in St. Joseph at the time. Do you hear something? Mm -hmm. Or is that my husband? I'm not sure. It was like a door opening or something. Gary? No, that was somebody moving around. Ooh, tonight's gonna be a good night. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you it just any time of day, people say, oh, wait till dark. You don't need to wait till dark here. It's always something going on. This was the largest wall. This was the largest wall. It did kind of startle me, and uh, this was just during the day while we were getting the tour. My phone just went up to send, but okay. that's not that noise. It's like a creaking or something. Yeah. Okay, there's a lot going on. I did want to say we heard a noise out here today. And it was during the day, during our tour. And it was not, we have no idea what it was. You know, it came from down there, right? It came from down here. So there's not a shadow play, that's why there's a mirror down here as well to help pick up on that. This was a recreation room. Is there anyone in here that wants to talk to me? My name's Amy, this is Jared behind me. Because tonight's walkthrough has already been interesting, we have had some really compelling stuff come through GhostTube. And it felt like not just one, but numerous people were talking at us or to us. And because of that, I've left a couple of GhostTube SLS static cameras running in two different areas that were to me of most interest because of the words that we had uh, come through GhostTube or because of uh, noises that we heard. So of course the second floor where I feel really weird, a lot of shadow play in that area, we've heard some weird noises up there. And then downstairs, sort of near the dolls and near the uh, haunted potty the chair. potty chair? I almost said haunted poopy chair. <laughs> well, I guess it was a haunted poopy chair. But now it's time to go down to the basement. Oh no. This is, yeah. You can tell, this is Jared's favourite place. Yeah, I get vibes in that grumpy man room, I swear to God. Yes, yeah, that's a bit, it's eerie in that room. It's cold and chilling. Does Amy break her neck going down the staircase? Yes. <laughs> Keep watching to find out. <laughs> now, if there's anybody down here, we're coming down. <laughs> I mean, the grumpy room does freak me out, but it is actually pretty cool down here though. Are you trying to avoid going in the grumpy room? No. The grumpy room? I like right this here. area. <laughs> it's so much colder down oh, here. It's freezing cold. Okay, let's go straight into the room. Ugh. I'll go first. Hello. The caretaker yeah he used to handle the boiler and he's kind of dirty and grungy looking and he's been seen hollering at people matter of fact that's what i saw the first time i pulled in the parking lot was a man in the window hollering and he was wearing overalls and he had coal dust all over him he's grumpy but i don't i don't find him violent but he is a little bit grumpy wants to know what you're doing down there so this guys is the grumpy man room and with good reason there's a man down here, the spirit of a man who was allegedly a caretaker and he messes with people. It's definitely colder down here. I don't know if that's just the basement, but it is less inviting to me. I could, I, like I could picture a grumpy man living down here, working down here, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what Miriam was saying, that this is a guy that would be working all the time and he doesn't like people in his space. And he'll be like, what are you doing down here? And it really does feel like fat. Plus, you know what? If I had to work down here in this freezing cold, I'd be pretty grumpy too, I suppose. 
Okay, I don't know if there's a man down here, but my name is Amy and I'm here with Jared. And I don't know if you appreciate people coming in your space and saying, grumpy man. I probably wouldn't like that. But if you are around, can you give us a sign? Are these your cigarettes here? How was that? That just lit up. I reckon someone's left this here as a paranormal trigger. Oh, cool. Cool, we can use that. New oh. device, her name is Crip. I didn't even know that that was there. I just seen the cigarettes, to be honest. Like a makeshift, um... Sada. Do you know if this man had children? I'm not sure. How many children did you have? I guess that could be relevant. There's a man down here. I think there was a few men down here. Yeah. So another thing about this area, guys. The... Beatties who owned this place they did have a number of people down here who were put into slavery so it's actually quite a heavy and sad uh, feeling down here rich. because of that as well rich rich they were very rich so when um, Armstrong passed away I was told he had three million dollars not given to his wife split between his nieces and uh, nephews so imagine back in those days i think it was the 1870s he passed away that would be he a was filthy rich. ton of money yeah he was absolutely filthy rich and it's curious that that comes down that response comes through while we're down here i think we have another bedroom here oh i think marianne said uh, that this piano sometimes you can hear Also, like what's with these? I, I didn't ask about these today. It's like, what are they Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy? Like Annabelle? Yeah, not the Annabelle doll, but someone's the made like Annabelle a Annabelle looks burnt. Um, someone's made a little stitching of them. Yeah, she does look Her burnt. Her face is burnt and the picture is burnt. That's what I noticed. I can't tell you it's got a story though, guys. Leave a comment if, I don't know, if you've got any theories on that. This was a refrigerator where they used to put blocks of ice. It was later electrified, but it's kind of cool. Like, I've never seen one of these, eh? Mary Ann was also telling me today that there's been people that have seen children hiding in this pantry space. Obviously, there's shelves in there, but when there was no shelves in there, so that's cool. You know what? It's weird. This room looks creepier than the angry man room, but I actually like it. It looks cool. Like, this one single light just on here. There's another one over here. Oh, sorry, too. Down this underground little tunnel here is maybe the creepiest, most unsettling thing I've ever seen. So these guys are shoes. Obviously not worn anymore, but they're from the deceased. So people who were here during the building's operational years as light. a nursing home. We have just brought light in here. Without this light, it's pitch black in here, isn't it? But these shoes apparently were moved to be discarded and that really upset the spirits. They wanted them back because they couldn't find their shoes. And that's the reason they're just left here. So guys, we've just flicked into night vision because ghost tubes have light. It is pitch black down here in this area, so maybe the spirits were getting affected by the bright light that we just brought down into this space. Yeah, I can't really see. I know there are like pipes and stuff up here. I don't think this room had any low hanging pipes. It's more the next room. Oh, Put your head down. Yeah, in that room. Is, in that room, there's a pipe. Pipe. Oh. I think the shoes are really creepy because they're like remnants of the people that once lived and worked here. Assuming that they're original, uh, Mary and our, our tour guide said that, yeah, they were just here lying around when they took over the building. Um, but yeah, it is really creepy down here. But yeah, my, my least favorite room is probably the grumpy room. 
having just completed a walkthrough of the building to orient ourselves and see if anything seemed to react to our presence, we decided to focus more attention on one area of paranormal interest within the place. This is known as Mabel's room. Mabel is just one of many resident child spirits within the old home, whose death is even historically documented at the mansion. One of the rooms that I feel kind of strongly about is Mabel's room, that is the young girl, the four-year-old girl. And we're about to enter. I have just rigged up the room. It's got cat balls in uh, the rocking chair, some of the toys. It has a paranormal music box and a night vision still camera watching that. Uh, so we're gonna go in. So this here is the camera that's been observing the equipment. Hello. I said hello, I didn't hear it. What did it sound like? I don't know, I thought I heard something behind you in the, like the hallway. What did it sound like? Like footsteps maybe? Maybe, you, were you moving? Hello. Hello. These footsteps are quite strange and compelling, especially given that I had heard them in the moment, and yet Jared did not. They are fairly loud and pronounced, and furthermore, seem to come from outside of Mabel's room, from the very hallway where we were earlier told that Eliza Beatty is often seen and heard walking down. We have uh, a lot of walking in the hallways. Hello. Down this way or? I don't know. Mabel, if you are around, we've got some toys for you. I've heard you like the music. If you touch those flashy balls, they'll light up really pretty colours. I'm going to leave you alone so you can play with them. I'm what? hearing noises down here. So Eliza, this is her portrait. She roams the upstairs and people have heard her footsteps and they've seen her up here. Is that what you heard, you reckon? Well, now I'm thinking about it. If I heard footsteps and it's up here, it's likely it's her. Eliza, thank you for welcoming us into your home. I hope that it's okay that we're here. We absolutely love it here. Is there something you can do for us now just to show us that you're around? I'm hearing noises all around up here. There's noises coming from here, there and everywhere. And it almost feels as though it draws us somewhere and then it does something somewhere else. Mabel, I don't know if you can hear my voice, but we've left those toys there for, just for you to play with. Can you play the music for us, please? I definitely heard that. <laughs> That was back towards Mabel's room. This is why this place creeps me out, like up here. Is there anybody down the hall? Can you walk past that mirror down there? So you guys, Honest as always, there's, I don't know what this is, a plastic sheet. There is some noise coming off of that, right? So I'm making note of that, but I swear, like some of the noises I've heard are not this thing. And I really feel like I heard footsteps, I don't know. It's, that paired with like thinking about Eliza being up here. I don't know that it would be Mabel, like a child. I, I have no idea if it's on the audio either. It's, yeah, strange. Can you do? Oh. Uh, that's going off. Okay. As you're that's just triggered. Room. Thank you so much. If you're playing the music for us. Can you light up one of the balls on the toys on the chair for us too? 
That's going off. I've never seen this behave like this. This is going nuts. That was really weird. We were told that they like the music. They love the music in here. And Mabel, the little girl, loves the music box. I've never seen one play for that long. Like, it's usually a few tones. Should we do something in here then, or? I've got an idea. Why don't we split up? Why don't you go down the basement and I'll stay in here? All right, guys, we are splitting up. I'm hitting the basement. Amy, you're hitting Mabel's room upstairs Mabel's area. Room upstairs, yeah. See you soon. Good luck down there. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, group keepers, I'm currently alone in Mabel's room upstairs. I still have the cat balls, the paranormal music box all rigged up. So Mabel, if you're here, I would love to talk to you. It would mean the world to me to meet you. And if we could be friends, I hope that you would like that. Did hear a tap. Thank you if that was you tapping. I'm gonna tag car as well in the distance. I also have a ghost tube SLS that I've rigged up. So I've put the SLS here, looking down that hallway because I feel like maybe I heard something down there. That's also where the portrait is of Eliza. All right guys, we're in the basement now. Um, we're all about pushing boundaries here on Amy's Crypt. So I'm venturing into the grumpy room first. I might do a bit of a fox in there maybe. I actually got the thermal camera with me too, so we'll set that up. This is by far my least favorite area of the building. Please don't go so blurry. I won't lie, I do have a tight chest walking down here. Don't know why. There's someone around me, can you make a noise? Can you move my hair? Can you show yourself to me? Hello? Whoops. Let's get the out of me. Sir? Are you in here? There's on the back of my neck. I bricked up. It feels like there's somebody around me. Obviously there's nobody here, but it feels like there's someone right behind me. I swear to God, if I go around this corner, there's somebody there. Okay, Mabel, I'm gonna come back in the bedroom now. I hope that's okay. I'm just gonna sit down here. All right, guys, um, I'm now in the room which is known to have a grumpy spirit. It's my least favorite room here in the baby mansion. But, paranormal investigator, you gotta do what you gotta do. I've got two cat set up in the bed. Night vision camera pointing at me. I've also got a thermal vision over here as well. I'm sort of thinking I might just do a box down here and just see what we pick up. So this is a ghost to box session in the basement room downstairs. <laughs> Is there anybody in this room that doesn't want me in this room? Are you able to play some music for me? Maybe you can move the ball on the chair?
Could you make a noise for me? How do you feel about me being in this room right now? Can you tell me your name? My name's Jared. so many noises up here, it's not even funny. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Do you like me being in this room? Beep sound. Do you like me being in this room? Did he just call me a moron? I'm pretty sure he just called me a moron. I know it's probably just coincidence, but like, as I was finishing up singing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I heard the clock chiming downstairs. Also, I am not a great singer, so don't come at me. <laughs> Mabel, did you like my singing? Man, I need to learn some other nursery rhymes, eh? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Can you tell, can you touch these balls on the bed to let me know that you're here? When you touch them, they light up. Can you tell me who I'm talking to? Can you light up one of those balls for me, Mabel? Or play the music again? I would love for you to play me some music because I'm not very good at singing. Sitting on it? You don't want me on this chair? I think you can see my bum print on this chair. <laughs> so all night up here I've been a little bit on edge, like a little bit skittish and not enjoying it around this area. I don't know why that is. It's not like I'm necessarily scared of it, but it feels a bit like unnatural. Which I guess like that is part of of the paranormal, you're not necessarily used to it, right? But um, right now I kind of just feel relaxed and chill. I don't know if that's just because I'm settling into this one room. I'm actually sitting down um, and singing almost like lullabies. It's almost like putting a kid to sleep. Maybe Mabel's asleep. It is late. She was only four years old. Do you like people being in this room? Is there anything I can do for you down here? Wait. What am I waiting for? I want to know what I'm waiting for. Go back. Go back where? Where do you want me to go? You have to tell me. You need to be specific. Who's here with me now? Who just sat on the bed? Okay guys, that thing just went off and I was not moving at all. So, something just moved that. Who was it that just sat on the bed and moved that, that, that ball? Can you do it again? Danger. Danger. <gasps> Why am I in danger? What, what did you mean by that? 
Mabel lovely, can you give me a sign if you like to go to sleep now? Can you make the music play? Why am I in danger? Should I not be in this room? How does this area make you feel? Excellent. Excellent. Alright guys, the response, excellent, doesn't really make much sense to me because a lot of... It would have been really shit to work and, and live down here. I'm not going to lie, so that was a weird response. But apparently they don't think so. Is that you again? Again guys, I was nowhere near the bed that time. It's definitely not me moving that. The place I couldn't resist investigating is right here. So our guide told us earlier today that she had been growled at twice. Oh, what? Motion sensor on the dunny bed, on the dunny chair. The dunny. Dunny means a toilet, as Australian for toilet. Um, they called it, what did they call it? The haunted potty chair. That chair does have activity around it, the old rocking chair behind me. We also had chair come for a ghost tube earlier. Uh, this is an area where our guide got grouted at twice. We also had Toy come through Ghost Tube earlier, uh, hence why we've set up the REM pod, cat balls around the toys that are permanently positioned in this area. So to me, it's very, very interesting. Uh, the experiment I want to try here, because we haven't done it tonight, is the Estes uh, session. Basically, it'll be me listening to a spirit box with noise cancelling headphones and a blindfold. It's like a sensory deprivation thing. I'll just call out anything that I hear come through the spirit box. Jared's going to ask some questions that I will not be able to hear. So it's quite compelling if they line up. Um, yeah, this place, it also seems like one of the darker areas to me because we're also told that a young lady uh, took her life on the staircase here. She hanged herself, which I think is very sad and tragic uh allegedly she was being bullied by some people here uh at the home and that really gets to me i don't like that um i've been in that position throughout my life since like school and there's a cat ball maybe they can relate to the bullying i definitely can relate to it and i yeah so i'm so sorry to hear that uh if you would like to talk to us we're here for you um don't be shy to come through and let me know anything that you'd like to be said. All right, my name is Jared and this fine looking lady in the chair is Amy. We're here to communicate with anyone that might here. be hanging around, you here? Great. Can you touch any of the objects we have on this chair here on the chair in the far corner or on the staircase to let us know that you're here? I just heard someone go. <sighs> okay, that's a bit weird. Is this your house? Jay or James? My name's Jared. Person sitting in the chair is Amy. What's your, is that your name? What can you tell me about these toys? Who is James? I don't know who James is. Can you tell me who James is? In bed? Are you going into one of the bedrooms? Can you tell me what number bedroom? There are a number of bedrooms surrounding us guys where some of the patients or the people that lived here um, David. would have stayed. David, is that your name? So. The floor? What about the floor? What am I looking for? They know. What do they know? Martin. Getting a lot of names. Oh, oh, shoot. Money. 
What can you tell me about money? Scotch. Okay, that ball just went up. Guys, that Scotch reference is very relevant because people with um, substance and alcohol abuse were, I did live here and were treated here at one point. Is that you sitting on the chair over here? 98. 98, what does that mean? Four. Is that how old you are or how many people are in the room? Corpse. Can you tell me about that corpse? Maggot. It's not a very friendly word. Special. Guys, got motion on the uh, potty chair. What can you tell me about that chair over there? What can you tell me about that chair over there? Just trying to make sense of some of these things that she's saying. Can you touch some of the items? On this Tonight. We're here all night. We're staying the night. First you... time. Yes, it's our first time here. Are you able to touch the red light on the chair? You've probably seen one of these before. It'll let us know that you're here. I feel little tingles all over my body, like a little electrical zappy feelings. That was the clock just then, guys. Are you touching Amy, the lady sitting in this chair? Father. Uh, that's really weird, we actually got father. Called me. Your father called you? You actually got the word father in the basement too. Decayed. Can you tell me whose toys are these? These are? Lose some weight. Excuse me? What can you tell me about this staircase? You said before, they know. What do they know? Tell them. Tell me, I wanna know. What is it that you're trying to tell me? You can tell me. It's open. What's open? Can you tell me what's open? Turn. Can you tell me about some of these rooms? Did she just say turn? What can you tell me about this room? Oh, that ball's gone off again on that chair. Is it this room you want me to go into? Stay. Do you want me to stay in this room or do you want me to stay with you in the hallway? You wouldn't believe it. What wouldn't I believe? Can you tell me what, what happened in this room or who stayed in this room? You see this? Yeah, what am I what am I looking at here? Joe. Just said my name. It just said my name. Just said my name. Just said my name. Alright, I'm back, I'm back. What are you trying to tell me something? Jared again. That is so freaky. Now Oh that had a bit more anger to it. Are you not happy that I'm here? Sprint. I just got mad chills. When she said sprint and I'm looking down I the stairs. I heard a little kid then. What's the kid's name? Ashley. I don't actually know if that's the kid's name, but that's pretty cool. Is Ashley here with me now? Come in. Can Ashley come in over here and play with these toys? So how did that flow, Jared? It was actually pretty good. Normally, I'm I feel like like I'm bad at making the connections when we're doing Estes, but I actually thought there were some really cool bits. So, firstly, I said what happened here, you know, hinting at the incident with the woman that's reportedly happened here, and you said they know. You also uh, mentioned something about children or a child, and then I said, oh, what's the child's name? And then you said Ashley. Oh, cool. Yeah. I don't know if that has any... I mean, the only child I know of is Mabel, but... They, they do say there's more than one child here. 
but only one child has a name and they know that Mabel is here and Mabel is an actual historical documented death within the building uh, but they believe there are other children so maybe Ashley is related to one of the other children maybe can't say for sure but I did when the child came through it sounded more like uh, not a descript word it was like a kid cooing like it's definitely a kid's voice though it was mm. you know yeah you said I just heard a child or something like that like you didn't say what you heard mm. yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah. like cat bulls gone off sorry oh, you guys can't see it yeah still there's a cat bull going off there so the cat bulls went off especially oh, on the potty chair like a few times which was really cool no REM pod REM. action it's hit or miss, you know. Yeah. Hit or miss. I actually feel like the REM pod lately on our previous investigations leading up to this one have actually been pretty active. Full on, yeah. Nothing just then, so. Yeah. I mean, you can't get evidence every time and maybe they just, yeah. they don't like the REM pod. I don't know. And perhaps the creepiest part of that whole, that whole Estes method was I went to walk down this area of the room, like away from you, and you said, turn around. And then... Um, I said, I'm, I'm going to go into this room and you said, stay. It's like, okay. And then you s repeated my name a few times. And Ooh. that was when I was like, okay, that's creepy. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that was probably for me, at least the highlight of the Estes method, but I thought it was actually pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. Awesome. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments. I gotta say as well, for me, I had this weird feeling and I don't know if it was because I just sat down and I was kind of getting comfortable in the chair, but it felt like little electrical pricklings on my body and it wasn't uh just one area for instance it started on my back i would say i was feeling it on my back but then i could also feel it on my hands and my arms was it like a tingling sensation like a zappy not really like a zap um but it was it felt electricity ish like staticky mm. Um, I don't know how to describe it. I haven't really felt that before, uh, but maybe it's common on paranormal investigations. So any investigators out there, anyone watching who has experienced this in a haunted location or maybe just felt like there was a spirit around, is that something that has happened to you? Leave a comment. Uh, but it was very strange and it kind of just moved across my body, but there were a lot of uh, words that I heard. So maybe there were spirits around me and that was a way to try and communicate. It was. Yeah, it was odd. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe because that really helps us out. If you want to do a bit more reading about the Beatty Mansion or any of the other haunted places I visited on Amy's Crypt, then head to my website, amyscrypt.com. We also post bonus content on my Patreon and my YouTube members. They are linked below. And you can follow me on social media at Amy's Crypt on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. But well, thank you so much for watching, group peepers. Until next time.